Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of three videos on the Canon EOS Rebel T7, which is also called the 1500D, the 2000D, and the KISS X90. Why this camera got two different four-digit identifiers, I, I can't explain. That's just what Wikipedia said. The EOS Rebel T7, as we'll call it in this video, is an entry-level interchangeable lens digital SLR. Now, what that means is entry-level means it's designed to be beginner-friendly. Interchangeable lens simply means that the lenses can be removed and another one can be put on at any time when you're not taking a photo without affecting your images. And digital SLR, DSLR, simply means that it has a single lens and the light from this lens passes through it into a reflex housing up here in the viewfinder so you can see through this lens what it actually sees at any point except when you're taking a photo. This has an APS-C sized 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, a 63 zone multi-mode meter that has a valuative partial and center weighted metering options, shutter speeds of 1 4,000th of a second to 30 seconds with also bulb speed. Bulb means that as long as you hold the shutter button down the shutter will stay open. It also has a 3 frame per second burst rate with a buffer of 11 RAW files and 150 JPEGs, which means you can shoot for about 4 seconds in RAW, or what's, what's that, about almost a minute if you're shooting JPEG. The viewfinder eyepiece right here is, has a 0.8x magnification factor and 95% frame coverage. Now what that means is that what the 0.8x, what you see through here, is 80% of the size of what will be on the APS-C sensor. So a fairly small image because of the sensor size is already fairly small. But that's honestly okay for a camera that's intended to be used primarily for autofocus since you'll be using the viewfinder primarily to just compose your scene and trusting the autofocus to do its work. 95% frame coverage means that if what you're looking at right now is what is on your image sensor, then what's in your viewfinder loses about 2.5% on each side and on the top and the bottom. That means that if you completely fill your optical viewfinder with the image that you want to take, you have a little bit of room to adjust and crop when you get your image back into your computer and want to edit it. The ISO range is 100 to 6400 plus auto, and the flash sync speed is 1 200th of a second. As we noted, this was an entry-level camera, and we know that because in Canon DSLR uh, ter terms, Rebel, or the four-digit uh, numbered cameras, or the, in Japan, the KISS lineup, that's what they named their entry-level cameras. Also, you can tell that a camera is entry-level when most of the functions that you're going to use and adjust are accessible through the menu system on the LCD screen on the back, and not via buttons. Entry-level cameras tend to have far fewer external buttons than do advanced-level cameras. This was made by Canon from 2018 until 2021, and it was discontinued when Canon discontinued their DSLR range. This was the last of the entry-level Rebel DSLRs. It was preceded by the T6, which was called the 1300D or the KISS X80, and it was concurrent with a whopping 27 other Canon digital cameras, and that stems largely from the place where Canon was at towards the end of the production run on this camera, switching over from DSLRs to their mirrorless lineup and producing both the M line and the R line at the same time. And then, as I noted, this was the end of the Rebel DSLR lineup, so that's it. This was the end, followed by nothing. Now, as we do, we'll go over the camera's features and everything that is on it. In the second video, I'll explain how to use all of these different things except the menu items. And then in the third video, we'll go through the entire menu system. It's going to be a blast. And uh, then we'll um, cover what everything and all the menu items do and how to set up this camera to be the exact camera you want to use. So starting here on the sides, these are your strap bars. This is where you would connect your camera strap. This is a speaker so that if you play video back on your camera, you can hear it from there. 
that's your sensor plane indicator. That indicates the plane at which your sensor is at in your camera. So if you're ever doing high magnification macro photography work, you can measure it off of there. This is your pop-up flash, flash hot shoe. Uh, this is index right here is your mode dial index, and this is the mode dial. So the index tells you what you're set at, and then the mode dial lets you change modes. On off button, asterisk and autofocus button symbols, flash pop-up button. This is your command wheel and your shutter button. On the camera's front, here is an autofocus assist light. So when your camera needs more light for autofocus, that will illuminate. Canon, model, microphone over here for when you record video. This is your lens release button right here. And I'll show you exactly in the second video a little bit more details about the lens mount on this camera. But here's the lens mount and your lens mounting index in indices. You can see there, there the mirror and behind that mirror is the shutter and the sensor. Some electronic contacts so your camera can communicate with your lens. On the camera's back, we have the viewfinder. Oh, Canon, the make, of course. This is your diopter adjuster. So if you have an uh, eyeglasses prescription that's fairly minor, you might be able to adjust the viewfinder's focus so that you don't have to wear your glasses when you use it. This is your combination live view and movie mode button so that you can enter live view and record movies. Asterisk button as well as zoom out and autofocus button as well as zoom in. Now with these buttons here that have the blue indicator as well as a white indicator on top, the white indicator is the standard function of those items. The blue indicator is the playback function. So when you hit the playback function, this button deletes, this zooms out to the folder level, or if you've zoomed into a view a detail in an image, zooms out of the, the zoom on the image. This zooms in from the folder level to the image level, and also zooms in on individual images so you can ex examine details. This is your aperture value exposure compensation button right here, display button, quick menu button, ISO, which is your sensitivity, autofocus controls, white balance, drive mode, set button, menu button, playback button, Wi-Fi active button, SD card access light. I'm sorry, it's your Wi-Fi access lamp. When this is lit up, you know your Wi-Fi is active. This is your SD card access lamp. When this is lit up, you know that your SD card is being accessed. On the side of the camera here, we have your NFC contact. This is where if you're using NFC, you would wave your phone or hold it away from this a little bit to make an NFC connection. Under this port cover, we have the remote control port, the USB port, and the HDMI port. We'll lift that up. Here's the remote control port. That's an old mini USB, older style mini USB port. This is a new camera, so I can't tell you whether this is a USB 2 or 3 connection. I couldn't find that information anywhere. But realistically, uh, transferring cards via your SD card, or transferring images via your, your SD card, will be faster than connecting it through a USB cable. HDMI out to display uh, images directly to a monitor or television. On the camera's bottom, we have the serial number, registration information, tripod socket, combination battery chamber, and SD card port right in here. Now some things not to do with your camera. Firstly, don't store the camera. Firstly, don't touch the shutter or the mirror. If you touch the shutter or the sensor also, by the way, so if you touch the shutter, your finger oils can get onto it and they can cause it to get uh, to, to not work properly or potentially jam if you don't push it the whole way and, and jam the leaves that way. If you touch the mirror, it is surface coated silver. Your finger oils can cause that surface coated silver to degrade or tarnish, which can affect your viewfinder brightness, your focus accuracy, and your metering. And don't touch your sensor because finger oils are an immeasurable pain to clean off of sensors and when one's buried way down inside of a camera and it's as small as an APS-C, it makes it that much harder. So just be mindful not to do that. Don't leave your camera and lenses in your car because heat can cause lubricating oils that are in these to get very thin and then get to places they shouldn't be and when they return to their normal viscosity, then components that shouldn't be lubricated are and they don't work properly. Likewise, in the cold, the cold can cause those lubricating oils to break down and become gummy. 
Also a couple of other things, extreme heat and extreme cold can affect the plastic on these cameras and uh, that's a really good way to cause some significant external and cosmetic damage. Also, these do look very nice and they, they are very attractive cameras and they would be a very tempting target for a camera thief seeing them sitting unattended in your car. Don't store your camera in a plastic bag or box because plastic is water and moisture permeable so that moisture can get through that material and cause fungus to grow on your optics or mildew to grow in the rubber parts of your camera. If you have a rechargeable desiccant pack, you can then store this in a plastic container because it, and just make sure to keep that rechargeable desiccant pack recharged. Also, don't let your EOS Rebel T7 get wet because it is not a weather-sealed camera and water and electronics have a lengthy history of not getting along. So just remember that your Canon EOS Rebel T7 is a precision tool that should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's it for this first video. In the second video, we'll go through all of the external buttons and discuss what they do. And in the third video, we'll hit the menu button and go through everything in the menus. See you then.